and welcome back to another episode of Getting Lippy with me, Emma Coneybeard, the home of everything entertainment and showbiz news, brought to you by Slingo. Joining me on the show today, we've got TV personality, singer, was once a jungle queen, and now an actress, Kerry Katona. Yay! Yay! And the crowd goes wild. wild. <laughs> I love that. And in the journalist corner, we've got Rebecca Lawrence giving us all the entertainment and showbiz gossip. How are you doing today? Really well, thank you. Good. Join the fun on Slingo. Enjoy a £50 welcome bonus. Play over 3,000 vibrant Slingo games. Age 25 and over. Be Gamble Aware. For more information, visit BeGambleWare.org. Oh. You both were awful. Thank you. I am like the rolls between two thorns. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Kerry, I honestly, I don't think I know anybody that is grafted more than you, from rags to riches to being bankrupt to being a millionaire. How do you do it? How do you keep yourself motivated? Oh, my little sprogs. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think... Because I, I, I think because of my childhood, I've always been a grafter. I've always worked really hard. Mm. And because I've wanted the fancy of a child, I wanted to be a mom and a wife and have that unity. And then when I had my own children, I wanted to provide and give them everything I never had. So, that, mm. so that's really what keeps me going is just so that I can give them amazing memories and create great adventures. And it, it's for them. I'm grateful little shit. So <laughs> well, You've got it, five, haven't you? I think so. I can't keep up sometimes. <laughs> I give them all numbers, right? Yeah, I've got five children. Molly's oh. 22 this month. Oh Lily's 20. Heidi's 16. Max is 15. And DJ, my little girl, she's nine. And they're all available free <laughs> to a good home if anybody <laughs> wants them. They're all house trained. Mm, yeah, <laughs> kind of. Kind of. You've done um, some amazing reality TV shows. Mm -hmm. I think when I saw you, you did Slebs on the Farm, didn't you? Yeah, I won that, and, yeah. Yeah, you did win that. I was addicted to watching that. Yeah. And I think that's when I really got to see like your true personality. Aww. And I was like, God, I bloody love you. Like, Aww, you're thanks, just love. so genuine, I think, yeah. in terms of when you are on TV. And you always have that don't give a shit attitude. Well, I think for so many years, I think when, especially when the news of world was around, you know, I think I have, I got more well known for my downfalls. Mm. Like people forgot I was in a girl band or forgot that I won the jungle or, you know, it was all more about the downfalls. And I was, it made me really suicidal. I mean, I was on the front of that newspaper almost every other week. I, I didn't know what to do. But the one thing I've always been is authentic. I'm real because I know where I come from. I, I won't change for anybody. If I get hired to do a job and, and there's a runner, I'm being paid to do my job just like that runner's being paid to do their job. Yeah. It's like I don't see any difference. You treat everyone on the way up because you're going to see them on the way back down. Yeah. So for me, it's being true to yourself. And, you know, I've made loads of mistakes. You know, we all have. But you've got to own it. You've got to admit it. You've got to deal with it. And I don't call them mistakes or lessons. They've all been lessons. That's I don't, so true. don't regret any of them. But you've just got to keep on fighting. I'm on this massive spiritual journey at the minute. So, um, yeah, I'm feeling really good and I'm really, really proud of what I've achieved in my life. Oh, that's amazing. Like, do you feel as though, you know, you're always in the press every single week with mm. some hilarious I stories? I know. Or, I mean, like, at least I'm covered in a Yeah. You know, I'm, I mean, let's be honest, I was in a girl band for a split second. Yeah. yeah. And I'm still here, yeah, and that's amazing. You're very and, entertaining, Terry. And, oh, thank you very much. But for me, I think I have this, I, I generally believe, why have I got through what I've got through? Because there's so many times I should be dead. There was times I was suicidal because of, I, I had nowhere to run. There were people selling stories. There was these, you know, you're getting hacked, you're getting followed by PIs. And it was, you had nowhere to turn. Mm. I, I, I now have this platform, and I feel like I've been a beacon of harassment, of bullying, of mockery and you know torment that I've got through it and you know what I don't give a shit anymore but it took me to the age of 36 to realize that yeah so your opinion of me doesn't matter your yeah. opinion of me it's not my business what you think of me what you think of all that matters is what my kids think of me yeah and it took me a very very long time to learn to love myself and until I did that I was in a bit of a pity party really mm. poor me this poor me that and you just gotta grow a pair 
handle it and deal with it and move on. I can't do anything about what I've just said. <laughs> I can't do anything about yesterday. You know, I can't do anything about my past. I can only learn from it and try and teach my kids. Yeah, oh, it's so bloody hard with kids. It goes in one ear and out the other. Um, but and you've got five of them as I've well. I've got five of them. I don't <laughs> even like kids. I already had them because OK Magazine used to pay me every kid a pop tiger. Oh. <laughs> I'm joking, people. <laughs> That'll be the headline for tomorrow. <laughs> I'm not. So I, I just feel like I'm here for a reason, and that reason is to give people hope because I never had that hope. There was nobody yeah. like me who I looked up to. So, and it sounds really narcissistic and egotistic, and people go, you know, who did you look up to? Who's your hero? Me. I am my own hero yeah. because no one helped me. Be your own hero. Um, you started in Atomic Kitten. I did. That was my era. 17. Hole again. Yeah. Uh, Great when, tune. Do you, when you when you hear this now, because obviously it's associated with like England football, do you ever yeah. go like, just book me, I can do this one on my own, not Absolutely. those guys. Absolutely. You know what? Because I, I saw you perform at Liverpool yeah. Pride and I was like, yes, see? You I mean, I've, I've been doing it for years yeah. anyway, you know, just some, sometimes it gets pressed and sometimes it doesn't. It's really bizarre, but I've never stopped yeah. performing or singing. But yeah, you know, Atomic Kitten, Natasha and Liz, for me, I we did the graft it wasn't like... You know, you go on a reality show, you sing a few songs and that's it, you know. We had to really graft. We mm. did all the crappy nightclubs, the school tours, our bottles through at our heads. <laughs> you know, we hand out flies in the street. We're a girl And band. it was before social media yeah. as well. So it was you really had to hard. do all the PAs oh, and like yeah. the crappy gigs but and I, stuff. But I actually enjoyed the climb. Yeah. And I actually thought this destination of when I get to this fame, I'm going to be loved so much. That's all I ever craved. Mm. I think that's why I wanted to be famous. Because I was so desperately to be loved. Yeah. Do you do you feel as though like the press back then compared to now is completely different? Oh yeah. This still got a long way to there's, go. There's yeah. like a nice filter, like a barrier in between back talent. Back in the and... day, they used to put a camera up your skirt, getting out of yeah. a taxi. Oh my god. Yeah, it was so violated. I got nickname. I understand why British Britney Spears is watching it, but my nickname back in the day was the British Britney Spears. Because I used to open my front door and there's 40 paps outside my house every single day. Are you kidding me? Uh, like, yeah, how? after this morning interview, you thought I'd kill somebody. Yeah. You really thought I'd gone and killed somebody and I'm just like, I don't understand what, what it is I've done so wrong. I've had speech therapy. I have actually got a lazy tongue. So, and with my ADHD and way I talk, sometimes I don't pronounce the words properly. So it's like Jonathan Ross with a lisp. Then you put in the medication I was on. Yeah. Your speech is slow, and it's like, oh, she's this, she's that, and it was like, and my kids, yes. they, they're the ones, and who all they're doing the burden. is just assuming, and then if anything, nobody they kinda asked, nobody. I, I told him, I said, mental yeah. effects to your career and I, stuff. I, 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 I witnessed my mum slit her wrist from the age of three. She was always trying to kill herself, and I said, I'll never do that to my children. Yeah, never. But there were times with the papers and the press, I actually wanted to take me off. I'm going to cry. Don't. You're going you're to make me cry as well. Please don't. <laughs> and I would never do that to my no. kids because I feel like that's where my lack of self-worth came from because I was never good enough for my mum. Yeah. I never want my kids to feel like that. Whew, but, that, me that but that's the era that we were yeah. in. And I was like, I don't, it was so intrusive and so invading that I just thought, and then the kids are coming home, mum, what's this, what's that? And I just that's thought, so Fuck. hard. You know, my kids don't read the papers. Yeah. They never witnessed and anything. It, they never saw anything. And I thought, you, I'm better off just killing myself. No, no. Oh, goodness. Just the that's how, that's, that. how, that's how, bad how bad it is. And I'm a really strong person. Yeah. And that's how bad it was back in the day. Oh, my God. So it, this is the era when Britney shaved red. It, you yeah. know, it was, there was yeah. car chases. It was... Phone tapping. Well, I can't that. talk about that because I'm in a legal case at the minute. But it yeah. was horrendous. Yeah. It was horrendous. And it's... Sorry. I know tissue. things are different now no, as journalists. No, we're, we're, not not hammering now the, we're not hammering on the We're not hammering on the journalists. Not, but I'm just explaining but how it was. Yeah, yeah, and it you know, if anything, they were in, they were intrusive to your personal life. If you, you trial like, by press yeah. before anything, and what you read, you take for gospel. They wanted you to fail. Yeah, and anything. I still to this day believe that the news of the world had a front page had a front page saying Kerry found dead. Because I, I really, truly believe that that's what they wanted for a headline. Well, that's how I... Isn't not, it nice that you can literally stick two fingers up and just be like, yeah, yeah. screw you. And I think I get angry about that because I, I'm not... That's something I never do. I mean, I've got my Molly and Lily's name on, on my wrist because I thought, well, my mum had um, 
manic depressive, which is now called bipolar. Mm. I would never want my kids Mm-mm. to feel that. So the fact that I actually got to that stage angers me that I allowed somebody else to control my feelings. I've had to really work on myself mm. and not allow other people affect me. And it's a really diff- difficult thing to do for anybody to not be bothered about what you think of me. Or It's very, very difficult, especially because of who I am. And it is something I am trying to teach my children, but I'm their mum. They're not going to listen to me, you know. But I it's... Think, um, yeah, I think... But if anything, I think the love that you have for your kids, and I've seen your kids today, and they're like... Shit, Sarah, no, yeah. they're not. They're, <laughs> they're well, not. They're no, really good kids. They are good well, that, kids. That's thing. I don't that's, actually have drama in my respect. life. Yeah, honestly. I don't have drama in my life. Mm-mm. My kids now bring the drama to me. <laughs> because <laughs> that's, that's their that, job. That, that's the truth. That is a God honest truth. I'm on the phone to Craig. Oh, you're not gonna believe what our Lily's done. Oh my God, our Max. Oh my God, our Heidi. She's different ke- kettle fish. You know. So for me, it's I. I'm in a really good place, and I'm now where I need to be to be guiding my. Children. Don't worry, because I'm always calling my mom every single day. She's like, "Oh, what do you want now?" I was like, "Oh, come on. You know, I'm the favorite." Oh, we just had like, a conversation in the car, <laughs> and then we like, literally just had this conversation in the car. And she was like, "Well, you do bring the entertainment factor." I was like, "Because my life." They're like, "Yeah, your life is just drama." You're Heidi. <laughs> You're Heidi in my eyes, but my kids. Well, I thought my kids. You're Tell yeah, yeah, and they'll go. Oh, you didn't. say that to all of us. I say I haven't actually got a favorite. I love you all exactly the same, but for different reasons. Yeah, and you've all got. You like Chris needs. Jenner? Exactly. Chris Jenner literally says to all of her daughters and sons, favorite. "You're my favorite." And then like ten minutes later, they're like. Did you not just say that Chloe yeah. was your favourite? I did do that. Like, yeah. I did it, but how do you really am a favourite? That's all because <laughs> you have kids out here. <laughs> but you are, darling. Yeah. Now, um, then uh, this is another little headline. Go on. Apparently, Netflix uh, is doing a film called The well, Colourful Life. Is this true about yeah. Life? Oh, my goodness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tell so me. I've wrote three autobiographies. They're not colouring books or worse search. They're actually <laughs> written by myself. I've actually wrote six books for somebody being dyslexic. I think that's a huge, well done. you know, achievement. So the first book, it's not a whole again that they've got at the moment. It's the very first one, which is called Too Much Too Young. So I, I had four mm. sets of foster parents. I had uh, four, yeah, four sets of foster parents, three refuges, eight different skills. I got put in foster home because my mum's fella told us he was Freddy Krueger. He stabbed her. I pulled a knife out. He wanted to cut our tits and fatty up and to chop some puts in the fridge. My first memory is watching my mum's slit wrists. And when I was born, I'm actually a product of an affair. So when I was born, the guy who I called dad for the first two years of my life, his dad I called granddad. He with me? Yeah. Me mum left the guy who I called dad for my granddad and married him. So my granddad became my dad and my dad became my brother. And then she left him for a woman. And so I'm an only child as far as I was aware. And then she then told me that um, it was this other guy called Ronnie Armstrong and begged me never to go and find him. But the news at world. Found I don't know why I looked at you, so no, <laughs> it's not you, sweetheart. I know it's not you, darling. But the news at World then went and found him when I was 26, or I think I was 28. And uh, I never, I that's why I got involved. Oh, it's a really colourful life. Wait till it comes out on <laughs> a screen is, near you. Yeah. Yeah. Who's going to play you? I would love Florence. Pl- oh, yeah. oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, she's great, And I'd love Julie she? Walters to play me nan. Oh, that's I actually look a bit like Julie Walters. I've got the same. I get, I get that a you lot. Really do. It was so funny. <laughs> Anthony Costa, who's like one of my bestest friends, he sent me a text. He went, 20 years, it's been do my head and who you look like. And he was watching a film with Julie Walters in it. He went, It's Julie Walters. I said, I get that all the time. So I love her. In fact, we got a, a magazine through when you're in the care system. When I first got put with foster parents at three o'clock in the morning, I got. Um, I was there for a couple of days, I got a magazine through for being in a care and Julie Walters was on the front cover of it and she was talking about kids in the system and I've always loved her. Aww. Yeah. That's so great. I think this is, this is. I mean, I've read a few of the scripts. I'm the producer of it as well. Oh, wow. I work along Fox and Cox who are the screenwriters who are absolutely amazing. Um, so yeah, we're, we've got a long way to go with it, you know, but I, I think it'll be brilliant. Well, yeah. I'll be in it, so. I yeah. mean... <laughs> It's definitely entertaining. Well, like, yeah. Obviously, your life was hard to it'd go through, really but, it, but it'd be a yeah. It's but a good I want to give people like, strength motivation. and hope, and yeah. you know, especially with bankruptcy. You know, mm. that's another. Th- you know, you feel suicidal and shame. You thought I'd had, you thought I had leprosy or AIDS or something when you go bankrupt. Cause no one wants to touch you. No one wants to near you, and it's like, 
I've not changed. Yeah. I'm still the same person. Sorry, you've not said a word all day. Shall I shut up? <laughs> no, <laughs> you carry on. Carry on. I say, give me a date, love. <laughs> but it, But once again, it's like being branded, isn't it? You yeah. see all these Even ex now. Fo- ex-football players, like, you know, it's headlines. Dirty words. Yeah, bankrupt. And, you, it's and like, everyone's like, wants to talk about think, it. But yeah, like, why? What happened? Yeah, you think there's almost, oh, she's got crabs. <laughs> I'd understand then, do you know what I mean? If you don't want to come near me. But it, it was... I I hadn't changed, you know, my accountant actually stole my money. He went down for it. So everyone thinks, oh, she wasted it, she blew it. I was a millionaire. I had all the cards. I was minted. And the accountant actually got sent down for it. wasn't just me, he did it too. It was a lot of people. Obviously, Mark Croft was also robbing oh me blind. God. I was on that much medication. Um, I used to buy with Coots, the Queen's Bank. Mm. And Mark would come in with a blank checkbook. Can I I'd just be signing these blank checks? God. And it, the, the, it all just went like that. Wow. Best thing that ever happened. <laughs> Looking back on it now, they were like, all oh, little rats, they all just disappeared. Oh, because you're not. Oh, the because bank I'm, not, I'm not the gravy train anymore. As soon as that oh gravy train stopped, they all just fucked off. So talking about relationships. In, oh, God, in how long a, we got? No, 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 hell. no. <laughs> it, you, no in, in all fairness, you haven't been dealt a good hand with men. Yeah. Which, yeah. But. Oh, you see, I wouldn't yeah. say that because oh, yeah. I, I, I have to. I mean, in my last book, Whole Again, I've actually given like a little paragraph to, you know, to Brian, to Mark, and to George, thanking them for the lessons I've learned. I mean, mm. obviously, the first guy I ever in love was Brian McFadden. I was 18 when I met him. We oh were together for seven years, you know, and it's the first time we had a baby, it's mm-hmm. the first time we get married. I mean, th- this wasn't any ordinary coupling, you know, it was a- Two pop stars. It, it, yeah. it, it, it really was. was. Huge. Yeah. It, it was ridiculous. You know, I think I remember it. Yeah, yeah we really had a do. police escort, it, it, it was crazy. Um, but, you know, lessons are learned, and Brian leave me, not that I can't blame Brian, he, you can't force somebody to love you. If someone falls out of love with you, it took me a long time to get over this mm. as well. There's nothing I can do about that. You know, if if, you, if somebody doesn't want to be with you, you can't force them to stay with you. And Brian didn't want to be with me. I think after he first cheated on me on his stag do, and we was already married at the time, you know, the, the trust had just gone. But now I analyze things. That was a trigger for me when Brian left me because it was like, well, me mum always tried to leave. I had no, so it was a massive trigger. And then obviously I met Brian and he kind of took me away from that. And I went to, I lived in Ireland, I got pregnant and I, he, I got away from it all. And I didn't want to be rich and famous. I wanted to be a mum and a wife mm. so desperately. I wanted that family unity. And that's what I realized. I kept putting on my kids every time I got with a man because I thought they can't have a broken home. They can't have a, the man not living with them. I mean, for me, you have three loves in your life. It was Brian, Mark should have been a one night stand. I was desperately in love with George and Ryan's now the one I'm going to die with. I was gonna so, say, yeah. tell me about Ryan, your fiance. Well, I'm actually only 35 because you're as old as a man you feel. I'm actually 42 in <laughs> September. Ryan is the most beautiful, caring soul oh. you will ever ever meet in your life. That's probably because he's got the mentality of the children. Um, <laughs> sometimes he's really naughty, so I've got to ground him and send him to bed. And they don't talk to your elders like that, because he's eight years younger than me. Um, he, he, he's lovely. It was a slow burner for me with Ryan. How did you meet? On Bumble. Oh, really? But I do have my own dating app now called Marnie, which is much better. <laughs> That's why we started Marnie, yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, but um, he's also my business partner as well, so we, we run several businesses together. And it's just gone from strength to strength. But if I'd have met Ryan 15 years ago, I'd have gone Because mm. I wanted naughty and, oh my and God. bad. Yeah, this is, I didn't this know, is what everyone This is the drama yeah. in the life. I, I, I didn't know any different. And I knew what I was getting involved with George. Yeah. And I thought I'd be able, and I knew George. You know, you have that gut instinct where you're like, I oh, know it's not right. And all my kids have got daddy issues. I get that because I got daddy issues. But it took me to the age of 36 to go, I'm enough for my kids. Because I always thought, I wanted to have a dad. I never got to meet my dad, mm. unfortunately. And um, 
I think sometimes we have in our heads the the picture perfect family portrait. It's, and how, it's, it's, not like it's how it's portrayed. It's from been society. portrayed from society from a very young age, and you know what is the average rate of like divorce and like split Look homes? Look at Cinderella it's, and Snow White. You know they yeah. always get Prince Charming, Prince Charming and Night Shyamalan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've always got a fucking tosser in tin foil. Yeah. They're like, always boring, those princesses. Like, my, yeah. my parents have been together. Like, my mum and dad met when they were, like, 15 and 17. Mm. And they're still that's together now. That's what I wanted. Right? But that's bloody rare. It's it is so rare. rare. And for such a long time, I always wanted to have that, you know, picture perfect. It obviously doesn't work because the, the whole world exist. has changed. Yeah. yeah, it's all changed now. So I always found it was very hard to be like, oh, but, like, they've got that. Like, why can't I? It's just... It's impossible for them. It's a rare case. Yeah, they won't ever like break. I mean, my yeah. longest relationship I've ever had is probably with the papers. Yeah, <laughs> and that and that's true. It, it is. They've been there from day dot, and they'll be with me till yeah. I die. Aww. So, uh, but yeah, I have no regrets with any of them. The one regret I do have is um, the now trauma that has been passed on to the children by a George. That's something I have mm. to try and learn and forgive myself for because I end up in foster home because my mum mm. was still a beat up I was yeah. like I'll never go through that and there I am in the same relationship and I'm going I guess it now because people go oh why don't you just leave it's not that easy I've got a kid with him I was like I don't, I don't know what to do I don't want another divorce and yeah. actually the papers always say Kerry Hughes has been divorced three times me and George never got divorced I'm a widow he refused yeah. to divorce me mm. um and that that was very difficult and uh I still struggle to come to terms with that and, you know, God rest his soul and stuff. But that was, um, that's something that I've got to forgive myself because I know full well that's why my daughter, eldest daughter, ended up leaving home and moving to Ireland because of George. Because mm-hmm. he could be very, very cruel. That's so sad. Mm. But, but he was put on this earth to give me yeah, DJ. Yeah. George was very, very tormented. He wasn't meant to be on this earth. I could never picture George being old or and he never took his own life mm. he was too vain to kill himself George and so and I knew George since I was 14 yeah. first time he asked me to marry me I was 17 God, no bed. <laughs> but Ryan now Ryan very much in love oh he's such a sloth when you get married oh I'm in no rush you're in no rush <laughs> no well, yeah. apparently the newspapers say they get married in Vegas I'm getting married every the... bleeding week in papers yeah. and apparently you're looking <laughs> to expand the family I'm 42, <laughs> you bleeding. Never know. <laughs> you know what? If I was to get pregnant, which I'm not trying to, um, it's not my story to tell. Um, um, I'm, 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 I'm good, you know. But if Ryan, if I did, it'd be a miracle and I'd go along with it. But I don't think that's going to happen. I am probably going to get my eggs frozen. We will probably just piss off to Vegas with just the children and get married. Because Ryan's not a showboat, he can't bloke anyway. Yeah. The whole um, Elvis Presley, Whitechapel sort of thing. Absolutely. I mean, we've been together for five years. Oh. I've been engaged for three. Normally, at this point, I'm talking to divorce lawyers and I've yeah. popped a few little sprogs out, do you know what I mean? But he's still not took me up the aisle. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, moving on to... Um, one of your other business adventures. Talk to me about OnlyFans. When did oh, it start? Like, and what three is... years ago. Really? Was yeah. this in lockdown? Yeah, absolutely. Why did you just all of a sudden decide? Because I've got great it? tits and I know I can make money from them. Well, I was a pastry model. I was yeah. a lap dancer. I used to be fully nude. I was obsessed with my boobs. They were amazing. And mm. uh, let's be honest, you know, I didn't get in Atomic King because of my vocals. <laughs> well, I heard you at the I am Liverpool really Pride and I'm like, no, I am, no, you're good. I am actually, I just, I have to set the piss out myself. Um, from counsel, I said, what was I going to do? I had a great set of tits on me and I used what God gave me and these are all mine and I've had several reductions because they just keep growing, but... I have no shame in that. You know, I'll go on a beach, I'll go topless, I'll perhaps get picture. I remember there was one picture of me. I'm eating a burger and I've got a pint of lager and I'm topless. I think it was Splash. And there was hiding on a towel. I had nothing to do with me. And they got 75 grand for a picture back in the day when he used to pay really good money. Now I do God. my own pack pictures. No shame in doing it. If I'm going away, I'll take my pap guy with me because I've got my kids, it's my body. Why, why are you taking pictures of me and I don't get no money? Do you know what I mean? It doesn't make sense. 
So OnlyFans, like everybody else, I had to sell my jukebox, can't follow the rent for what I'm going to do with the kids. I'll do anything for my kids to make sure they're, they're sorted. And I sat my children down and I said to them, what do you think about OnlyFans? The only one who was a bit concerned about it was our Lilla. And then when the money started rolling in and they all got the right pads, they all loved it. And now Max and Heidi are like, go all the way, mum, go all the way, I can get a horse. But we're a very open family. I mean, oh, the I first shoot I did, I Molly yeah. took the pictures in my underwear. It's like you're in your bikini or a beach. Yeah. You know, Ryan's put the baby, it was funny, you know. But yeah, I get a bit saucy on there and stuff and why not? But were yeah. you nervous doing it again now? I was at first, yeah. yeah. I, sh- I felt sick. My stomach, I did. I was like, oh my God, oh my God, what am I doing? And then when the money started coming in and I started creating these amazing memories and adventures with the kids and got them back in private school and <sighs> being able to take them away and, you know, just being able to spoil them at Christmas. The pals that my kids get at Christmas, I have no shame in it. I really don't. I just, I want to live the best life I can live and just, I can't take any of it with me. I can't take my Gucci bag, I can't take Lamborghini. All I can take when I'm on my deathbed are those memories that I create with my family and that's all that fucking matters. And money gives you options to do it. And I have no shame in it. I'm laughing all the way to bank, so I don't care. Uh, And it doesn't matter what I do. No matter, I could go, right, I'm gonna become a lawyer. My kids are always gonna get shit because I'm Kerry Katona. So it doesn't matter what I do. That's so, so wrong. And I had, it, it got to a high at one point. She sat this new school where we moved up north and all these lads were giving it to her. I said, well, turn around and tell them to tell the dad to stop subscribing and make sure that the mother <laughs> is satisfying him then. And she did. Fair play. <laughs> oh, God, that's I brilliant. said, you're the one getting picked up at Lamborghini, Heidi, <laughs> with the Prada bag collection. But none of that matters. And I'm just very fortunate that I can afford to do that. But yeah. for me... It's about the adventures that I'm able to afford. Cause let's be honest, I have got an orphanage. <laughs> there's that many kids that I can create. I mean, there's like nine of us going away and off on the holiday, you know, and I'm able to do that. And Private jet, you could hire that, yeah. you know? But I, I don't, it, for me, it's it's like when yeah. I do these TV shows, these reality shows, like, God, what a great adventure that'd be. You know, you know, slept on the farm, you know, oh. and then we did coach trip with my daughter Lily and I'm running around shooting zombies. It's like I'd never been able to do that before. <laughs> These are about memories and yeah. that, and I don't care what anyone else thinks and it doesn't matter what I do. Because unfortunately it's one thing I try and forgive myself. All my mistakes I've done are a burden on my children and that is not fucking fair because they didn't ask for me to be their mum. Mm. Well, they did choose me, really, lucky little devils, but they didn't ask for any of this. Yeah. They've just been born into it. So I'm just being as business savvy as I can and making as much money as I can and yes. give my kids as much as I can, really. So what's next? Oh, there's so much to tell you that I can't actually tell you. Yeah. <laughs> We've actually just filmed a pilot for something, but I can't say any more than that. TV, reality, movie? TV. Oh, but I can't say too much about okay. that. I would like to do a new, I would like to do a book, another ah. book, but I want the kids to be involved, especially my DJ about blended families. Yeah, So, that'd be you know, good. that'd be a very confusing one, I guess. <laughs> uh, but yeah, you know, I'd love to see something like that. I want to be a motivational speaker. I want to go to prisons. I probably know half of them. You'll be a great motivational speaker. Yeah, I, I my want, God. I You're, want I'm to in help people. Yeah, I mean, I've got my businesses. I've got the boutique. I've got mine. We're dating half. I've got the fitness app, MFIT. We just opened another business. What else is there left? Um, <laughs> There's so much. Yeah. I just want to, I want to be in that 1% bracket. I I I come from getting my clothes off a car boot, to become a millionaire, losing it, getting a bit of money back, come bankrupt again, and becoming a millionaire again. I've I've never met anybody who's done that, no. and I'm not ashamed to sit and say I'm really fucking proud of myself because yeah, I'm should proud be dead. of you. Wow, yeah. I should be dead, but I'm a grafter. I will continue to work, and because I'm back at the top does not mean I'm going to take my foot off that pedal because I know how easy it can go. Yeah, if it does go, it goes. And this yeah. is why the motivational speaking is like, yeah, I would listen to you and your stories. You've not had a choice today, Liz. No, I know, <laughs> but it's brilliant. I get it. I know. <coughs> oh. I just want to give other people hope and, you know, the, it, money doesn't, it doesn't make you happy. It just gives you better options, really. Yeah. And when I was a millionaire the first time, I was miserable as fuck. I was so unhappy.
So there's a couple of things that are happening at the moment. Uh, Barbie film. Are we a fan? Are we a lover, hater? Now the Complete soundtrack. Lover. Huh? Complete, Complete lover. lover. Yeah. The soundtrack <laughs> is breaking the singles charts, right? Warner Brother has created this pink movement. In the first week, they got 529 million in sales and they spent almost 150 million, more than the actual film, in the marketing budget. That's mad. That's but crazy. worth it because it's pulling the money back in and they're saying it could make a billion, which <gasps> is just insane. Wow. So, and to be honest, worth it, completely Anything worth with Margot Roberts in any, any way, yeah. you're gonna watch it. <laughs> Love her. And, um, Have so, you seen the film? I'm not allowed to watch it until Molly comes home mm. from England. She oh. comes back to England. So I want to watch, we're gonna go as a family. So yeah. I, I have gotten those dodgy fire sticks, so, but I refuse to watch <laughs> it. I'm so sorry. <laughs> so as a family, we're all going to watch it. Yeah. So, but talk about I mean, I've read loads of stuff about it, but apparently it makes you cry as well, doesn't it? There are it? some emotional bits. There yeah. are like some, definitely some speeches that sort of really hit you as a woman, I think. And you sort of realise what it's like living in that sort of world, not in Barbie Well, land, I, think, I, think, I, think, I think we do live in that kind of world. We all... Mm. Oh, this it's like with all these filters it does my head in with my kids it, yeah you know it especially that one that makes you look absolutely drop dead god i don't use no filters bold glamour yeah <laughs> made me look like a drag queen <laughs> and, and, and and we all i think as a woman who's been in the industry from 17 i mean yeah. i used to get put front covers of magazines in the circle of shame where you could see a bit of my cellulite and i've been sliced and diced that much on like a flat pack from my queue because <laughs> We all want to look like Barbie. Back in the day, I was compared mm. to Pamela Anderson. So you're always chasing that you. So mm. I think there's a really important message that comes yeah. through with the Barbie film, isn't there? Yeah, that pressure to be perfect and what we do and how we bend ourselves to try and be the person that we think other people want us to be. Yes. And no. it's a case of, yeah. sorry, no, it's a case of just thinking, I'm good enough as I am. Exactly. And it takes us women a long time to realise that. Yeah. I mean, I've got my hand up. I mean, these kids, like, are hiding because, oh, can't I get my lips? I can't wait to do that. And I'm just like, just enjoy your perfect tight skin. Oh, my God. Now, <laughs> this... this I went to the airport not long ago and there was all these girls with all these big, massive, individual fake lashes on and all these massive lips. I thought, they all look the same. Yeah, they do. I mean, I've had... They have but, created the Barbie world, if yeah, anything. but I'm entitled to at my age after I've had kids. But it does worry me with the next, the younger generation and, and, and boys thinking that's how girls should look. Yeah. yeah. You know, when they take the clothes, I go, oh, you don't look like Barbie. Mm. So. Yeah. What we've known Nunny as well. Uh, <laughs> my kids were delivered to me by a stalk. Yeah, exactly. What? Now, I'm going to be a little bit controversial with the Barbie film. Mm. Because, yes, it's a good film. Have you seen it? Yeah. <gasps> okay. But the messaging is amazing. There's a, a great monologue at the very end by the Ugly Betty um, actress. What's her name? America Ferreira. There. Yeah. yeah. Powerful. But here's a controversial bit. I've heard it before, like it's it's not original to me. Um, Cynthia Nixon, she did an amazing, powerful piece on her social media like a couple of years ago that got me. So even though that the messaging in Barbie is good, I'm not discrediting it, I'm not discrediting the film. I was a bit like, the storyline's a bit basic. And I was like, the messaging was a little bit like, wasn't it original? Like, so... It's been done before. It's done. It's been done before. And then also, it was very hard. Maybe the storyline was so basic um, because they want to bring in, like, the younger... Yeah. And I think it was almost like you're targeting the younger years, the, the younger generation, but then you've got someone like Ryan Gosling or Margot Robbie, which is, like, our, our yeah. generation. So it was like, you kind of want to have a, a Disney character in there but then you don't want a Disney character because you want to hit the older generation so I was just a little bit conflicted that's that's I think that's probably my no word. I completely get that but it's like you say that's how you draw in a massive audience because you're appealing to people a little bit older but then you're also appealing to a younger audience yeah and I think however they get it I think it's great that young women have heard that message now yeah whether it's from the Barbie movie or from their friends or yeah. from their parents like I think it's inspired a few I mean it was powerful it did mm. give you goosebumps but I was like this is this is amazing. Then then I was like, I kind of already heard it before. Maybe was it funny? 
Yes. Yeah, there was definitely There's some bits. Because we told it's, it's quite, he's yeah. quite funny in yeah. it. Ryan Gosling. Yeah. I think it's his facial expressions, yeah. which are just so amazing. Like, oh, God, yeah. He's so he does steal the show, even though it's the Barbie movie. Really? Ken yeah. is the one you're watching. Give the man an Oscar. Yeah. Really? You think, think so? so? From the Barbie yes, film. Really? Mm, comedies are always overlooked at the Oscars. It's always yeah. dramas and someone's yeah. upset and crying the whole time. Give it to Ryan for just giving a little cheeky smile. No, it's the eyebrows. <laughs> okay, it definitely is the eyebrows. It's the facial expressions. Mm. He was like really good in it. So I didn't, yeah, didn't mind that at all. Uh, you know what? I'm really looking forward to taking the children out because of- You'll of, enjoy it. Yeah. No, just because of the message that you're talking about for women. So I think you're right in what you're saying. For me, it's the younger generation that, that scares 100%. me yeah. so much. And the fact, I mean, our high detects pitch and it's this- yeah. <clears throat> you can't see your face because they're all so insecure. Yeah. yeah. And they're all living... But, the, but their world it started with them on video cameras. Like, you don't see yeah. millennials, like, walking down the street taking Instagram stories. Like, that's not really... I find that really uncomfortable yeah. because that wasn't our world. We... You know? Let me tell you, I've got to tell you this story, right? So, our Heidi started, like, talking to some lab because that's what they do now. They talk via social media and Snapchat. Mm. And uh, she was, I said, why don't you just go knock on his door and say, why don't you take the dog for a walk? She went, <laughs> OMG. You want me to walk down our drive <laughs> and then go to somebody else's house, walk down and just knock on the door and say, do you want to go for what I went? This yeah. is what it used to be. We yeah. didn't have mobile phones as well. We literally would call world. the landline. You think I just asked <laughs> like, to go oh, murder do somebody? Can, do you mind if I can speak to blah, blah, blah? But that's why we got the balls to do it. Yeah. You yeah. Know, now it's up, social media. To their parents. Can <laughs> fake I please speak fake to filters. Jake? You know, not showing your face. Oh, don't post that. Don't post it. I mean, yeah. I'm lucky yeah. if I, I'm able to, I've got... I've got a good copy proof before I post to anything on my teenage kids. Have you read, have you uh, gone back to see what the Instagram posts that used to, like some of your first first ones? Yeah. <laughs> no one gave a shit like what you posted. Like it would be like a half eaten brownie or yeah. like just me doing the, like we didn't care. There was none of that yeah. stuff. And there was no like face tune or editing or any filters. I mean, I used to get yeah. actual fan mail where people used to write a letter oh, wow. on SMTV, you know, <laughs> hey, Mr. Postman, and you actually get a fan letter. And yeah. it's, it, I, in the last 10 years, we have, the world has changed mm. so drastic. I mean, I dread to think in the next 10 years where we're going to be with all, I mean, it's going to be holograms. Yeah, I, I, it, it is, I mean, That's it is, mad, really, it is really bad. Where are you going to go from here? I mean, how do you know, even if, you know, even with, um, you know, all the dating apps now and they're oh, putting yeah. pictures apart, even if you are like talking to somebody on a video, how do you know that's how they actually really look? They can put AI fil filters over that. The Oh, don't. Ooh, there's God, enough cat, cat pictures out there at the, the moment. It <laughs> is, it's, it's, really, hell. it's so, so scary. Yeah. But regards going back again to the, the Barbie film, I really hope that that message helps yeah. young, the younger generation to show because it, it really worries me so much that the world that our Heidi is living is like, oh, don't post that. Mm. No, yeah. it is so it's true. So, it's like, just be, accept who you are. Post a picture of you laughing, being an idiot. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I I mean, I, I don't have any filter albums because it's all on social media. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Everything so I've true. done is on the internet now. Yeah. The one thing I do say to my kids is, once it's out there, it's out there. Yeah, uh, yeah they You've can do anything careful. with it. Yeah. That's what yeah, there was definitely a few Facebook um <laughs> in, there was a few Facebook albums because that's what we had as oh, well. Yeah. We didn't have we did entire we, yeah. albums we after didn't have a Instagram, night out. we had Facebook <laughs> albums and you literally take a camera with with you and you take oh god, it makes me cringe. You take photos of you and like your whole friends and it was oh, always me and my boyfriend best. and it's like no makeup. You didn't wear yeah. like the, like the makeup wasn't what it was today. And you just go out there and just take photos and then upload the hundred yeah. <laughs> <laughs> photos. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, I remember you used to get Karen wind it up in just like a picture. Oh, yeah. Go get it, it, go get it developed. And you, After you were so some holidays, you, you couldn't that. wait. You, you didn't even yeah. know what was on that. And no, you were so and you was like, oh my god, look at the statement there, and you'd laugh about yeah. it. Whereas now, looking, oh my god, oh my god, you can't put that out. Yeah. Oh my god, I can't. Uh, and he's like, oh my god, who gives a shit? Yeah. it's. I it mean, so I've true. made an effort to say because I'm coming coming on here. But if you go on my Instagram. Yeah, it's not, I don't really wear makeup. I just made a bit of an effort because I thought, oh, you know, I'm coming on here, yay. <laughs> but like, yeah. my, 
I like with Lily and Molly, they're a different generation. That was when Facebook was just starting. Oh. Mm-hmm. Whereas my Lily's very much like me, she doesn't really give a shite. And, and she got offered to do Love Island. Oh. Twice I'm like, Lily, please do it. Not just because I wanted to make loads of money and give it off to me. <laughs> <coughs> I do apologise, I got a chest infection. Because Lily's one of these, she won't shave her armpit. She'll sit there smoking a roly. She's a very natural, beautiful looking girl. She won't shave her legs. I'm like, teenage girls need to see oh that. Oh my God, that's great. They, you know, it's not... Oh, this, oh, this is, I've got Realness. to look so perfect. Like, you don't have to look perfect all the time. Give two flying fucks, yeah. you know. That's how I think it should be. It's got a completely and I think that's one of the, Yeah, I think that was one of the main messages in Barbie. Like, mm. I'm not going to spoil it for you, but it was that the stereotypical look, you know, that needs to change because oh, it's not mass- like that. Yeah. So it, there was definitely some amazing moments in the film. Mm. And I think maybe I, it didn't make so much of an impression to me or impacted me as much because... You're very aware of that message I've anyway. already been aware of that message mm. and maybe because, like, I went through shit when I was younger mm. and you've you've had to build this, like, thick skin mm. and to be like, and you know what you said earlier about this is me, take it or leave, mm. you know, you I had to learn that from a young age yeah. as well. So I think because you've already, you already know that. Mm. So when somebody's telling you again, it didn't... You know when somebody says it hit like, you really... as much as what it might do the younger people maybe. Oh, it would it would hit the younger people massively, yeah. definitely. And it did, it, you know, I did go wow, that was that was, you know. But when somebody says something really emotional that affects you, you get the goosebumps, you get like the oh god, am I gonna cry? You know, sort of thing. And I wanted it, I wanted that so badly, and I was like, I didn't didn't hit me as much because you're already aware of it. Exactly. And what people don't understand is we're all unique. Yeah. We're all a piece of art. We're mm-hmm. all different shapes and sizes. And it, we all have to accept who we are. Just because, I mean, I'm on this fitness journey, not because of my body, because of my mind. That will all fall into place afterwards. It's all about what's in here and what's in here and not any of this. Yes, I might get tweaks and that done because I'm older and I can do and I can <laughs> afford it. Who gives a flying book? But my message to younger people is, if you're feeling good in here and in here, everything else will fall into place and don't ever go and try and change yourself for somebody else oh my god yeah that was that's the biggest you mistake you can do if i'm going to get something done i'm going to get it done for me i don't rely on ryan for my happiness he enhances it yeah whereas before i'm not going to post on social media for the attention of a people no i'm doing it for me and, and i think that's always been a massive only message. show you what they want to see yeah that's all like yesterday i was in the gym i was training i was coughing my guts up i had no makeup on i'm sweaty i'm smelly because that's real fucking life. Yeah. yeah. And that's what people need to see. Yeah, exactly. Rather than, oh, yeah, this is my <laughs> life. I got a Prada bag. But in all fairness, like, that's just me. how the world has been. Like, my yeah. cousin's exactly the same, yeah. you know? Like, that's how they are, you know? And we, when we was up and when we was growing up in school, like, no one really wore makeup at all. Yeah. And it's only just because it's been introduced. And I, to be quite honest, like, I think the Jenners and the Kardashians. Oh, I think, massively I think changed they, the world. And, but they're, you know, they're kind of going back on themselves a little bit now. Where like Kylie Jenner was like, um, "We need to, we need to change the beauty standards." Well, that's all right when you say that. You look, it. you look perfect. Well, she said that she was eighteen and she had all of this well, work done. Yeah, and, and it's so different. And, and I, I understand young. what they went through mm. and the scrutiny that they're in. So different. And it's and it's like, like I was saying before, I I got the kids into this meditation thing, and, and Heidi and her friend was it was so powerful to them. They were crying. I was like, use social media for a good thing. Go on and share your experience. 100%. You know, and I think everyone's so afraid about what ever anyone else is gonna say or think. And it's like people will respect you more for being true to who you are and not for thinking who you want who they want you to be. Yeah. And that message is not sinking in. Yep. But this film, very yeah, it will resonate with a lot of people. We've got mad. forget our mullet, we're gonna go watch Barbie straight after this. Yes. <laughs> we're gonna go Benny Hannes first. Um, um, yeah, I'm looking forward to watching it. You know, you will enjoy it. Yeah. And um, I don't discredit it or anything <laughs> like that. It was just, you know. Uh, moving on to something else that's been hitting the headlines at the moment. Apparently, Ariana Grande has been <gasps> branded a home wrecker and she's not a girl's girl. So basically, the backstory is Lily J, which is the wife of Ethan Slater, which is Ariana Grande's co star in the new film that they're filming, Wicked. Ethan has. S- 
what they were what you, you probably know a little bit more about this so lily j is ethan's um wife, so they wife. Are, well now a strange wife a strange wife. so were they together when they started filming yes but that's what so basically oh. what they're saying is that Ariana and Ethan started dating a few months ago earlier this year. Right. But at the time, Ethan was posting all these lovely tributes to his wife on like Mother's oh, damn. Day. Which, so that's sort of not really adding up. But no one's really come forward and said a specific timeline, but it does look. What about Ariana Grande? She's married. Yes, still technically. But again, when did that break estranged. down? People are saying that happened in sort of January time. But it's weird because she herself still hasn't put out a statement saying, I've, We're separated. Yeah, I've left my husband or he's left me. Oh, or look, but, okay, so where Wicked is being filmed is back home in the countryside because you drive past Little Ivanhoe and you like you see all these big buildings. So that's been there since the start of the year. So hang on a second. It, does, it doesn't all add up. That's what's confusing. And I think it's just weird that the only person to speak out so far has been Ethan's wife. Because Ariana was accused yeah. back in 2013 of cheating on her boyfriend at the time. And Ariana Grande's been cheated. <gasps> well, he accused her of it, and he said Couldn't that he cheated on her. Couldn't believe that. Not Nathan Ariana Grande. Sykes. She's like the Disney yeah. princess. But She's got this thing. clean he image. This big, and with Nathan Sykes from The Wanted, which was such an odd pair in Ariana and Nathan. Really? But, yeah, but then she did a, a statement back and she was very clear and she was like, no, this is not true. This is a lie. So I just think it's strange that she's not saying anything now. Damn. You, you see, I, I, I'm going to play devil's advocate here. And, um, you know, I think... When you are in this industry and you're acting, I think you have to have be with somebody who you're really solid with and trust because you are going to try to come back. I mean, I don't know how married couples, you know, how does Blake Lively like, go and watch Ryan Reynolds, the sex scenes? Mm. You have to have that really, really strong, strong yep. trusting trust connections. Behind. So it's even from the insecurities from the it. part of the, of the husband and wife who aren't in the industry. Mm who are then getting a little bit jealous. You, you just don't know, you know? I, I don't know. I don't think anyone should be cheating on anybody. I've been there, done that. I was... I, I dated an actor before, and I actually watched his <laughs> sex scene <laughs> on the TV show. And I was like... I didn't... I wasn't jealous. I was a bit like, oh, God, I'm kind of turned on. <laughs> <laughs> I but get I suppose, that. But, then, but I suppose that's just like, what if you trust that person? Well, yeah. So. Well, it's like being married to Brian McFadden. I loved him <laughs> being on stage and all the... I yeah. trusted him with my life. It was a massive turn on. That man comes home with me. Yeah. And I loved it. And I wasn't jealous in the slightest. But then once he did cheat, I was then yeah. like, I'm the most trusting person in the yeah. world. And he was like, please give it another go. I'm sorry. And I'm like, I'm going to end up resenting you because I'm going to want to know where you are, who you're with, who you're texting. Yeah, who you're yeah. And that's not who I am. You kind and of broke exactly it and put the seed in. Happened, and it was right. never the same again. Yeah. When females come out with statements like Lily Jane, there's no smoke without fire. There's a reason mm. why women have wrath, yeah. you know? And that's because you've disrespected or, you know, you've done something that there was, there's no communication there. Like, I know it happened recently. A woman scorned is a yeah. dangerous woman. So it happened quite recently with the Taylor Swift and the Matt Healy, the frontman from 1975. So... Out of nowhere, like there was this article that came out that Taylor Swift was dating Matt Healy, and then the girlfriend turns around and was like, "Oh, he was only with me like the other day. He's like he was supposed to be my boyfriend." And yeah, she but had can no I also idea. say as well that those women who go and do that, I always think there's a motive behind it. Right, I, I do yeah. because like, let me be honest. Like when Brian cheated on me, he got this Amy Barker, I'll never forget her name, to sign a confidentiality agreement and paid fifteen grand to keep her mouth shut. Right. <laughs> I thought, big mistake. I give you a blowjob, I get a new pair of shoes. What, what, where's the sense in that? She gets 15 grand, what the fuck? Do you know what I mean? I'm joking. But then there's also alternative motives about this woman. This what I just wanted Carrie to know the truth. No, you didn't. You wanted your name in the paper and you wanted percent. more fucking money from it. There's always motives back. If there's that was the case, you'd have kept your mouth shut and you wouldn't have said anything. Well, and then go do a pitch like this with your boobs out. <laughs> But you know, Bullshit, you are I'm right. sorry. No, it's, yeah. You are right. Like this Lily J, you know, she could have just kept quiet and it could have been a story that just under the covers. Why would you want to put your face and your name in the headlines for She's people so to feel something like that? For Deal somebody to feel sorry. Deal with it privately. She just had a child last year and you just oh, think the hormones are probably just, still raging. Yeah. Like, 
No, yeah. I do. I get that. But I mean, when the woman who you've cheated on with, the the woman who's done the cheat, the 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 person who's caused the blame, for me, it was like, you have no interest in me. You don't care mm. about my feelings. I have two children. You have now just. I'd rather have not known. Yeah. yeah, I think I'd rather I have not have known. Don't tell me this don't woman know. has just yeah. you. You gone and slept with me, husband. You've now gone and told the world. I'm completely mortified and embarrassed. I have yeah. two children. The relationship is never going to be the same again. Yeah. And all you want is more money that you got paid by the news at world. And you stood there topless. Uh, oh, fuck off. <laughs> well, I'm sure it'll be cleared up. We're very underground day. Eh? Soon. Hmm. Fingers crossed. <laughs> well, I wish them all the best. I hope they all get it sorted. So we have people that get in with dilemmas <laughs> and I've got one right here and we would like to get some advice. Okay. okay? So I'm going to read it out. I've got myself into a bit of a messy situation. I started dating and sleeping with a colleague that I've known for a couple of years. It started out just by going out for a couple of drinks, walks. Now it's turned into sleeping together. Also, we're both on the same page about keeping it casual and not letting any emotions get involved uh, as we really enjoy each other's company. However, the penny drops. I recently found out he has a fi uh, fiance, hence why he obviously likes to keep it quiet. Although the relationship is pretty rocky, um, it would have it would have pulled me away from him. But some reason, I just don't want to. I'm not. I'm. I'm still on the no feelings train. As much as you might not believe it, but the sex is really good. She's addicted to the dick. <laughs> Get a vibrator, love. <laughs> right. And go get an STD. If he's shagging you, God knows how many other people he's shagging if he's got a fiance. Sorry. No, it's true. True. Uh, but the sex is really good. Um, and we have such a great laugh. I know it's wrong for me to continue. I know it's selfish, but it makes me happy and I enjoy it. Plus working with him will make it really awkward to cut off. What should I do? Go get yourself an STD. <laughs> um, stop it. You can have sex with somebody else. He's got a fiance. It's... I... I I personally would walk away from it and definitely um, someone's yeah. gonna get hurt. Exactly. She says it's awkward now. What She's would it addicted be like to the, the dick. The That's fan, all it is. You know? She's yeah, got the little twigs <laughs> from like having yeah. sex with him, likes the emotion. And I think it's probably I think if it gets cut off, she'll realise that she actually you likes him what? more. Yeah. Than I just that. said that and I've actually had an affair myself. Um when I was with Mark Croft and it was oh. the best thing that I ever did. Um, and we were both married. We both fell madly in love with each other. He did leave his wife for a little bit, but for me, that just gave me the massive weight. It saved my life yeah. because, you know, but she's not in the situation I was in. Um, mm. But if I was her, I, I'd definitely walk away. They're engaged. Someone's gonna get hurt desperately. If not you, you know, um, Somebody's going, I'd walk away. I would definitely walk away because if he's shagging you and he's got a fiance, who else is he shagging? There's no, yeah. you know, There's no loyalties. Uh, exactly. And she's even said herself, yeah. she's, she's being real selfish there. You she's, know? Because she's closed herself off to this guy, therefore it means that she's closed herself off to other men as well and she won't get the opportunity to go That's out there. While he's living his best life, eating all the pies. Yes, and he just <laughs> love walk away and He's now. loving himself. He's, like, his ego's massive, so walk away. Walk away. 100% walk away. Anything else to add to that? Get yourself down to the clinic. <laughs> get a vibrator. <laughs> get a vibrator and get yourself tested, lovely. Thank you, ladies, for joining me on the latest show of Getting Lippy. And everybody else that's been watching at home, if you've got any dilemmas, let us know. or we'll read them out, hopefully next time. But until next time, thank you so much. Brilliant. Take care. Bye. Bye-bye.